antioxidants and aluminium and antioxidants, and you can go on. It is clear that, uh, that, that it is a matter of getting balance. And balance comes with understanding again. And that's why we do in our chocolate dimensions first portionability, so that you don't have the whole talent in front of you, you can have a small one. We have Kit Kat, four fingers, we have two fingers. Yeah. So you don't have. It. So again, it is a really educating the game. We have ice cream. And yes. No, you can say ice cream. Uh, if you, and I always use the example, if you had given ice cream to a kid on Sunday and you see the sunshine in his eyes, it cannot be bad. But then again, a company like ours, we can use our research and development to develop an ice cream that gives you more enjoyment, better taste, pleasure again, yet with, with half the fat and one third less calories. We, we have an ice cream like that, the slow churn ice cream that we have in the United States and in other parts of the world. It's just an example of that. And then talk about portion. I'll make it too big, so that you know, and, and these are the, I feel, that much, much more than uh, responsible as a company than saying whatever may have a little bit of a shine of not so nutrition, we get out of it. Uh, people are going to continue eating ice cream. But uh, this company, like ours, can put in resources to really find out how, how we can do that with more cookies and less batteries and, and making part of that, that part of a uh, healthy diet. That is much more responsible. I do believe that. That the obesity problem. It's a big one. It's a big problem. Uh, that it is, it, it's a combination of things. It's not just banning some food. It is a combination of, 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 of uh, portionability, responsibility, using technology to reduce uh, calorie uh, content, um, uh, ed education. All that is going to help to really uh, keep that balance back. All the people who work with MES may know how important R&D is going to stay and how important it is to find the right product and to make sure that uh, it is healthy, etc. I would like to move to marketing. How much do you trust marketing? You want to, uh, you want to know where it is? I, I know the answer, but I, I'm not sure that all the people in the room that know the answer. We are a marketing company. It's all livelihood, it's all DNA. Ever since, just think about the, the nest. 145 years old. Uh, that was the first expression of marketing of Nestle. Nestle is a name. This comes from Heinrich Nestle. Nestle is German, small nest. He said, well, a Nestle, the French speaking part of, of Switzerland, hasn't the same meaning of what it had uh, in my home country. But a nest can symbolize that. And, 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 and he wanted to uh, transmit his first product was a milk cereal that actually saved the life of a child. I actually say the nest and a mother feeling. That, that is a symbol. That was marketing. So we have, in a sense, have been part uh, and, and working with marketing because at the end of the day, we are living. Nestle is uh, existing because there is a trust. There is a trust relationship. As I mentioned before, 1.2 billion times a consumer uh, buys all the product. That is 1.2 billion times a trust relationship uh, uh, reconfirmed. Trust building is linked with connecting. We connect, connect with information, connect with arguments, connect with emotions. And that is what marketing does. Marketing creates uh, that bridge towards the consumer to create that, uh, uh, hopefully, honest relationship that is trust building and that brings them back uh, the dynamics to which you brand. So, um, uh, marketing is, uh, is just what we are. So we move now from marketing to advertising, which I think is a natural segue. Uh, and you are in Cannes, and uh, we know that uh, all the creative people on Earth uh, would uh, love to, to go very far with Nestle. I'm not speaking only about our creative people in this group, but uh, all the <coughs> advertising agencies, because they all believe that uh, we can go much farther. First, what is your own judgment on the kind of advertising that you are, and creativity that you are having? And how far, how would you define the limit of creativity for the next paper? And right. Creativity is unlimited. I mean, uh, but it should serve a purpose. Uh, so, uh, what is the purpose? Purpose is again, I can go back to that trust relationship, and you have a, you have a product and, and, and or a brand, and, and, and then we have a certain structure in this uh, how we go about that. And there's some discipline there. And 
when you say discipline, then you start creativity, maybe. No, no, there is a need for purpose. And the purpose is, uh, first of all, the brand essence. What is the brand or the product standing for? That is the purpose. What is, what is the bridge that we want to make with the consumer on what basis that relationship should be built? That is, and, and then around this, this, this essence, you build a, a, it has to be a big idea. We call it a big idea, you know that. And, yes. and the big idea is actually that difference, simple thing. It should be simple. Big ideas are always pretty simple, but they're well thought through and, and they should serve that purpose. And then the creativity is then how we translate it into, into language, visual or uh, audio, towards the consumer in a broader context of, of uh, global communication. But, but that, that's the dimension of what creativity should do. So the only limitation of creativity in my eyes is should serve the purpose. Translate it into a big idea of the essence of a brand. And, and, and that's it. So uh, I, I don't see, uh, if I would say no creativity is limited to, uh, that doesn't make sense because it is the creativity that brings that spark, that differentiation, that cutting to the clutter as I say. And there's a lot of clutter now, uh, more than in the past and every year more. So you better have, first of all, a good definition of your essence, a good, uh, good finding of the big idea, and then a very creative uh, way of going about that. When you look at the, I don't know how many hundred campaigns that you have every year. Uh, what are the two or three that come to your mind and say, that's it? Well, yeah, of course. That's not necessarily from publicity. We can accept that it can come from. But I like the Dodge Ah, good. Thank you. <laughs> and it is working well. Uh, Which, by the way, it's uh, useful. But it was a good one. Uh, the music, everything. It was. Uh, was well, again uh, serving the purpose. It was, it was something new, younger, and there you go. Uh, I like uh, pre, pre, uh, very much the the, the Perrier one. Uh, this, this, this ultimate refreshment when uh, you get things turn out. But it's just good. People retain it, it's, uh, but it is sending a message. It's part of. The, it is a good execution behind the big idea. So again, it plays well with these uh, the, these, these dynamics. Uh, uh, talking about um, our products also, the whole campaign, but that's a, a, an overused one, is Nespresso, which is a nice one, uh, uh, that, that has brought us uh, quite a lot. So, But then you go to small, less visible ones, but uh, the juicy chicken, you know, the, the yeah. small campaign, you like that one too. It, it, it's, it's very good, the product is good, so there's a good, I would say, uh, working together, communication with the product, the promise and so on, so uh, quite a few. And if you go beyond the work of Nestlé, what are the kind of uh, campaign advertisements that you really like or admire? You say, this is the kind of thing I like. like it too, but no others would like. Yeah. So many years, uh, consistently messaging and all, yet always new and refreshed. That's what I like about campaigns too, that they really stand uh, the, 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 the time. Uh, that, 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 that is something that I, uh, we are long term thinking. So we like campaigns that are refreshed, yet at the same time they they have the same thing on. As we are on the campaign, uh, in your long tenure at Nestle, is there any campaign that you have refused uh, because uh, of any kind of reason, and then you say, ah, I should have accepted it? No. No. <laughs> no regret. I can't. No, no regret because I didn't know if it would have been successful. So, no. Yeah. If, I say, if I would say yes, this one and this one, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be fair. I didn't give it a chance at the time, so I uh, turned the page. It's over. Let's go for it. That's the pretensions, but that's the that's big Okay, as uh, we are turning the page, maybe we will uh, turn to the audience and give a chance to a few questions. Uh, so if you can have uh, the, the light uh, in the room and uh, uh, people would like to, to put a question. Si on peut avoir de la lumière dans la, dans la salle et on va poser des, de demander à l'audience de poser des questions. Vous entendez derrière, là, euh, des techniques Merci. Oui, c'est la technique suit, voilà. Merci. Euh, so, 
we turn to you if uh, anyone in the room has uh, a question, otherwise we will continue. So please, you, the one who would like to put any question, it's open. Yes. Sorry, microphone, please. You will have a microphone. Good afternoon. I'm from Brazil. I'd like to ask you, how do you see the importance of packaging as a marketing and advertisement tool, or even to add value to Nestle products? Good afternoon. Now, uh, uh, packaging is the first is the, is the first communication tool that you have. It's actually the first expression of the personality of a product too. The first contact that you have. So, in my eyes, it's very, very important. And and, and, and yet, sometimes you, you're totally right. We don't use it as it could be used. It is not only protection, but we have we have uh, uh, for so many years. Uh, I think uh, really put some quite a lot of focus on non packaging, not only the appeal but also the communication to it. And uh, you see uh, the branding, how we use the branding on the, the packaging, the appetite appeal to some extent, but also the information again, yeah, connecting in a more meaningful way. At the end of the day, food is serious. And, and, and we spoke about education, we spoke about transparency. Yeah, well, the packaging is the best way to really connect on a rational basis also with the consumer. And, uh, so for us it's extremely important. Okay. Next. Hello, I'm Salvatore Savona from Italy, a journalist. Uh, I would like to know what's the uh, importance of digital in the um, choices in terms of investment uh, in the present and uh, what which are your plans as for the future. <laughs> Uh, digital, I, I hear that digital is all over the place. Also, this year, last year already, but this year really exceptionally. And uh, and it is um, we we are, we we are involved here. I think uh, something like ten percent we are engaged already in digital and and, 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 and building up capabilities. Uh, it is clear that uh, digital is also a world that you have to really see through the clutter. Uh, there is so much about digital, digital. yet. There are certain dimensions, not only companies, but dimensions that are profiling. And uh, now, very clearly, that we we are gonna have to engage. Uh, we are engaged quite heavily already with many brands and many markets. Uh, 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 if you would ask, uh, for example, KitKat is a very good example. It's a, it's a big one, and, uh, but we have others. Very uh, years now uh, with all dimensions of, again, of, of, of digital. So um, uh, we are accelerating, going on. Through. Sometimes Nestle, to a certain extent, is, is a little bit cautious to, to jump in all pools. Uh, because it is easy, we shoot that here and there, but uh, uh, when you manage a, a portfolio, and we are a decentralized company to start with, we are really decentralized for the company. We leave many, many decisions uh, in the markets, which is the right thing to do because food is, is local. Uh, we have many brands. Yet, at the same time, you have to leave that freedom into the markets, and we have many engagement issues. And yet, you have to see that as a company globally, what is the, uh, the, the, the connection with digital as a company? And it should not be only by adding all the smaller initiatives. What is the commitment of this? And I do believe we are really engaging there. Uh, think just about, again, food. Food is not only emotional, it is linking up with uh, recipes, it is linking up with uh, consultants, and some people can ask questions how do I do this and that? And actually, we have already. Good uh, things like uh, uh, Koch Studio in Germany that is driven quite importantly, more importantly, with uh, more and more digital, because it allows you to really uh, connect a permanent dialogue in a much easier way than before. Before it was a phone call, second phone call, now you can be permanently into the rooms of, of, of consumers. I mentioned uh, Koch Studio, which is the Maggie brand culinary, where we actually can, um, we have the kitchens and we cook with products. And and we webcams that are permanently online and in, in, in vivo. So these are all the things that, uh, that, that we can use. And we can connect also the, the kitchen of the people now uh, with, with, with the webcams you have. Now. So that starts to be something that is really, uh, I would say, instrumental to us for the future. Next one. Yes. Uh, 
Yes. We have some new Somebody else? Hi. Do you have the micro microphone? Here. Where are you? Okay. I'm from okay, I see you. I see you. Where the dog? Okay, I see you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a global big brand has their own global strategy, but every country has a different situation. So I want to ask how you can make the balance between a global brand strategy and a local brand strategy. Okay. One little phrase can answer that I explain it later. It is uh, global inspiration, local execution. And let me explain that. Uh, for example, you have brands like Nescafe or brands like uh, uh, Dolce Gusto or Nespresso. But what you have is, is, is a global, again, I go back to this global brand essence and what the brand stands for. Um, that is a global dimension that we have. Yet at the same time, we are very decentralized. The execution of that essence and how we link up and how it is done is done very local. And that's why we have a structure where we have people uh, that are on level to take these decisions. Let me give I said that food is local. Uh, Nescafe is a global brand. You know how many plants we have. Plants is different profiles of flavor of Nescafe is 180. That's a lot uh, of differentiation, yet it is the same uh, experience of, of, of a relaxing moment with, uh, with them and invigorating moment of uh, uh, Nescafe. So, it's through global inspiration, yet local execution. And what you have to have then is this discipline of, of aligning local actions in, in, in that uh, global strategy. That's how it works. And, and I must say that this is strength. Um, the, the world is global, yes, but the consumer, and especially the food consumer, is a very local relationship. And, and, and that's also we have global brands, yet we have also local brands. And then these brands are owned. Uh, actually, brands are owned by the consumer anyway. So, but we have 6,000 brands worldwide. You say, geez, that's a lot. But we have close to 30 brands that are doing together. Only 30 brands are doing two, three quarters of our, of our sales. Uh, so we do have big brands focused and global inspiration. Yet we, on top of that, we have many, many regional and local brands. And then it's people locally caring about these brands because they're owned by the local people. And, and that's how we work. Uh, so again, we are an ant company. Uh, it is global brands, yet local brands. Before I give you the microphone, I would like to pick on what you have said, because I think it's something which is uh, extremely important, particularly in the world of digital. Uh, we have seen some reaction of uh, consumers regarding the brands, or how they have, for example, reacted to the change of logo of Gap, where they stopped the change because they were considering that uh, you know, the company should not do that. They didn't like it and they said, no, you should not do it. I believe very strongly that uh, the brand is no longer owned by uh, Nestle, P&G, etc. At the best, it is co-owned between uh, the corporation and the consumer, but uh, the vast majority of ownership goes to the consumer. And this is what you mentioned. Can you elaborate a little bit on this? Because uh, uh, I have sometimes heard some uh, advertisers, uh, advertising people saying this, but very few advertisers rec recognizing that the brand is co-owned. And you are the very first that I'm hearing publicly say it's owned by the consumer. Well, if I would have, if all... I'm not speaking about bookkeeping. No, no, no I, understand, I understand, but if we would have, if we could get to a point that the consumer owns, really feels he owns a brand, that would be really the super. Because whatever, then somebody attacks the brand, would, they would defend the brand, actually, more than we should do, or we do as a company. Uh, the, the, I spoke about trust. Uh, you trust always more what you own, what you feel is mine. Uh, and that's why then sometimes they are uh, very close to that brand. That's really uh, an extreme. But I mean, if you could get that ownership, then you really got the marketing to its, to, to its extremes. And, and, and then if you then, as a company, start to change position, start to change certain things, and you see that, and with digital media, and, 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 and 
social media, you get more and more of that feedback straight away. And sometimes we have, but we've had those certain things that people felt you're touching something from my, my brand. Now we know it straight away, so you should be very sensitive to that. But that way, I would love that. If everybody would say, don't touch my brand. And that there's enough answers to give to create um, uh, growth and, uh, in the line of what the brand stands for. But that's again the importance of, of loyalty to, towards your own brand assets again. That you don't mingle around every day. Um, because at the end of the day, brands are certain dimensions in people's life to make choices. I'm sure somebody said that once. It is true. And if you start mingling around, you start to confuse them, and the world is already confusing them. So we should not that. We move to first row. Uh, I want to go back to the place where you said that uh, food should, uh, you had uh, three points, uh, pleasure, knowledge, and balance. And uh, I think that it's an issue for the whole industry nowadays because you have a part of the world that needs nutrition and the other part that needs less nutrition. And I'm also from Brazil and uh, in Brazil authorities now uh, tend to point a finger into the food industry saying that uh, you play a, a major role in the health problems and so on and so on. Uh, I'd like to know how you see it. Well, first of all, I don't believe you can just point your finger to one thing. Uh, yeah, no, not, not, not this thing, but no, 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 no. the whole food yeah, industry, yeah. sure. But I'm answering as an industry, saying that uh, uh, the industry is, uh, as I said, there is no unhealthy products per se, and there's unhealthy diets. And, and I don't believe that it helps us forward to, to point one dimension, the industry, to it. Um, there should be a responsibility. That's why we define also nutritional environments with these three uh, things. And then uh, we should go and organize ourselves around that and, and do that as a company, do that as a part of an industry. And then it is linked with education. And their government should play too. And uh, it is linked with, with um, uh, uh, balance. It is linked with using R&D and science and understanding into your own products and, and, and give offerings that, that allow the choice, small formats and, and so on. Uh, so it is again a holistic uh, dimension and in many areas in Brazil we are working very heavily with the government. We have the Healthy Kids program uh, uh, in, in, in Brazil that, 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 uh, that is just doing that together with governments, uh, working and educating children and kids to go about their own diets and, and healthy diets. It is clear that, that uh, we have a double burden at school. It's not only that some have too many calories, others don't. You see the obesity going up dramatically in the developing markets. Why? Uh, because people start to have more caloric uh, uh, diets. Uh, because they have more, or they go to certain dimensions of their diet that are more caloric uh, dense. So uh, there again, there's more holistic going on. And as an industry, we can and we should be part of it. That's why we have our, our also an uh, advertising committed to our, ourselves as an industry to go uh, honestly about that. But I do feel it is a little bit too easy for governments also, the policy makers, to say, well, we have a problem at hand here, let's, let's just say, and we're going to tax every calorie of uh, That, in my eyes, is not honest, it's not fair. Uh, towards, not fair towards industry, it's not, the, it's not fair towards the public and the broader dimension of the population. And that's where we are engaged with, and more and more so. So you have some uh, finger uh, pointing, but in general, there's awareness of we have to go holistically about that. And, 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 and that's what we try to do. Um, we are a long-term thinking company. We're not trying to just uh, fool around and, and hit and run. Uh, we don't want to hit and run, but we want to we be them, part of society at large. And, and actually, that is how we think of society. And in our area, it is R&D, understanding more, seeing solutions. It is uh, indicating and transparent information. It is portionability. It is all these dimensions together. It is also, if we have children, stay in children, but do it meaningfully and responsibly. And not just if we get rid of it and leaving it to others to do whatever they want to do. Uh, it is much more difficult to be responsible for having a portfolio like we have and going about it in that way and living with society at large and more than Thank you. Next. Is there any other? Yes. Hi, I'm Julia, actually, in Lausanne, Switzerland, not so far away <laughs> from the industry. I um, was wondering if you could speak a bit about the process that you have created for enabling creativity and innovation within the company. Oh, that's a huge question. 
oh, do you, actually, if you ask is, you're a, you're a big company. And, and in normally big companies, you, you, have, you have a little bit of a frame because of the size that may asphyxiate creativity. And you, you get administration, procedures, processes. How can you maintain the freshness of entrepreneurship and creativity in a, in a company? I think that's more or less the question. And, um, and first of all, uh, by being very decentralized, you, you put decision making as close as possible where the consumer is. So you, you have indeed already a dimension in your company that makes and gives decision making very close where actually the reality is. And, and that should be a first base of an allowing entrepreneurship. Um, we could have another structure saying we're going to do it all centrally. Uh, we're going to do it all on the lake of Geneva, the big headquarter, and decide everything. Well, then what you do is actually uh, uh, conditioning the creativity to one spot, one place, and, and you, you kill the freshness of many, many ideas, many, many uh, resources of creativity that are so spread out in the mouse. Who, and what is creativity? Creativity is linking the world up in different ways. Just not doing something that doesn't exist. It's rewiring. And if you rewire only in one place, it's a very narrow, a narrow shoe of creativity. We are very decentralized. Secondly, there's also, yes indeed, uh, inducing more than entrepreneurship. Outward looking, not inward looking. Um, and that is what we're trying to do also is this form line. Uh, really having uh, all of this link with consumer, with the market, etc., should be outward looking. Should have the nervousness and alertness of what competition does, what, what, uh, what the other guy is doing, what the consumer wants to do. Uh, sometimes if you don't have a good split in a company of, of what I call the, the supportive, efficient backline, and, 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 and the front line that should be marketing driven, uh, inspiring, uh, creative, uh, uh, fast moving, alert. Um, if you don't have good that split, then you start to have an inward looking company. And, and, and it's very dangerous. I must say also, uh, we, we try to challenge ourselves permanently. So we are really uh, looking and matching and comparing. We, call it, we, call it, we don't call it benchmarking because benchmarking actually what it does is you, you neutralize uh, your company to the average because you're benchmarking, you want to go to the bench and at the end of the day uh, you, you neutralize everything, the lowest common denominator. What we try to do is actually gap creating. Always uh, uh, creating small gaps everywhere, in every part of the value chain. And everybody is responsible in his own area to create these gaps, little gaps. Uh, but by adding them up, uh, you really have a very, really competitive advantage. So, uh, and when you're successful, another part of but you have to watch out when you're successful. Success is the worst there is because you don't learn from it, it, it makes you asleep. So the, 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 the complacency is a dangerous thing. And again, challenge that permanently and give the ownership of success, not only to a few people in the company, give the ownership of success to the 280,000 people that we are. That, that, that sparks into entrepreneurship and creativity. As we are coming to an end, uh, I would like uh, to say uh, two things. I don't want to make you blushing, uh, Paul, but uh, uh, we know each other since uh, now uh, quite a few years. Uh, it is just incredible to see how you have been able to move this company so fast as a new CEO and to continue to grow it and to keep very lively the passion. I think there is something that uh, I very much like uh, uh, working uh, uh, for Nestle and with the Nestle people everywhere is this lively passion for what you do. And uh, it, we find this in every single country with all the teams everywhere. There is a passion which is really uh, uh, motivating for all our creative people. Tomorrow, tomorrow you are still here. Are you going to see the, uh, the shortlist? Are you going to see... Uh, so tell us. I'm going. I mean, you know that I'm here after so many years not coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we know that you will...